video we will see how base call auditing and blast works right so the base call auditing is all about auditing the base call so the base call means that when you do a dna sequencing right so the dna sequencer produce something called electrophorogram that is nothing but uh, uh, you know a graph where you can see lots of peaks right the y axis will be the fluorescence intensity while x axis will be the time so these peaks correspond to which base though it is color coded and mostly it is automatic the base call is automatic so calling each peak with which base it is that is called the base calling so we will see that how to do this base calling manually that is auditing the base auditing means that the software will al already produce automatically the base call will be produced but you have to doubly verify right you have to validate you have to check it carefully that is called auditing so manual auditing is enormous task it takes a lot of time but there is a heuristic method so you can actually fast up the process by doing a multiple sequence alignment with a blast first right so this video will show you how to do that plus i'm going to introduce two concepts the global versus local alignment what is the difference between the global and local alignment and how to perform the blast search and what are the variants of the blast search so in this video we are going to see how to do the base call auditing as you see the base call needs to be carefully checked to make sure that it's all right you know devoid of any problems or ambiguities for which the best way or the easiest way is to look for the unique polymorphism you know the polymorphism that is found only in your sequence not in uh, in other related sequences so how do you know that so the best option is to do a blast and find the related sequence or homologous sequence that is evolutionally close sequences or for example the same gene but different species and to see some uh, unique polymorphism present only in your sequence and doubly check to make sure that these polymorphisms are real not some artifacts of some uh, you know some programs or softwares so that is the best option so you'll have to do a multiple sequence alignment with top hits of the blast search the, we are going to see that how to do that in this video as well as the the next one uh, the next one is all about the multiple sequence alignment so we will have to check for the unique polymorphism that is nothing but mutations not shared with any of the other related homologous sequences right or you know the indels as well so it is not just the the uh, you know the mutations or polymorphisms base changing mutation it can be insertions or deletions also you have to make sure that these are not really artifacts you know the insertions and deletions have got a huge or tremendous ramifications as you see that so it's not that easy to have the real indels so if you have one insertion in your sequence that would actually lead to putting the gaps in all the rest of the sequences you know so that is kind of highly unlikely so the penalty needs to be high so we'll have to look at the electrophorogram peaks to identify that the base call is correct if not manually edit uh, these sequences you know so for example in this one this is a sequence alignment of very different uh, various homologous uh, sequences got from the blast sequence so this is our sequence this is nothing but an ITS that is non-coding internal transcribed spacer region of uh, uh, ITS sequence from one of the geographical isolate of uh, uh, one tree species so these are the uh, homologous sequences downloaded from the internet so as you can see that all these homologous sequences have I mean these all these dots these are basically nothing but polymorphisms or mutations you see or the, the dash you can see that the lines right so these lines you can see that in, in PNR our isolate you can see the two lines that is absent in all the rest of the sequences so if you look at carefully you can see that is the two lines are actually true or false so if it is false you can change that sequence you know uh, because if the if the ferrogram the peaks doesn't correspond to the name the alphabets mostly this kind of mistakes happen by the software so all these problems you can find out by rechecking the electrophorograms carefully if you are doing this work if you have like thousands of uh, nucleotide sequences it's not that easy you know so manual auditing takes a lot of time so a good heuristic method that is to save a lot of time is before auditing you do a blast search and do this kind of alignment and check for those regions which are unique to only your sequence so how does this blast work as you see blast is nothing but basic local alignment search tool so it is a kind of a local alignment 
So the main idea of the BLAST is nothing but a construction of a dictionary of all the words in the query. All the words plus the related words in the query, they make a dictionary and search this dictionary against the database. Something like Google search, you know, index based search, BLAST as well as Google both are index based search. So you have a query and related words as well, you know. So all those things uh, you can perform that in the Google search as well, right? So if you made some spelling mistake of a word, so the Google automatically search for the correct spelling, right? So this is something called fuzzy logic. So Blast also incorporate this fuzzy logic in their algorithm. So initiate the local alignment for each word match between the query as well as the database. So whenever a align, significant alignment is found, then the alignment extends in both the directions. So that is how the Blast works. So global as well as local sequence line, there are two kinds of alignment as the name suggests global means the whole sequence length is aligned. While local means high scoring pairs inside the arrangement is being uh, aligned. As you can see in this picture, if two genomes are completely, uh, you know, compared one to the A has a longer uh, genome length or size while B has lesser. And if you do this global alignment, then you would need to put a lot of uh, you know that the gaps introduced in the B to make the complete length of alignment while the local alignment it is basically not the whole length it's only high scoring pairs for example genes are taken out for example here to here is one gene and the homologous gene for this species B is here to here so this are taken out to align it so basically the global alignments are aligned for the entire sequence length. It's good for to see the overall similarity between two genomes, for example. While local is best for subsequence alignment, right? So global alignment of two genomic sequence may not align the exons alone. It is complete alignment, right? But now the coming to the local alignment, it can only pick out the maximum scoring exon, not all exons. So each has its own plus point and negative point. So, you know, you will have to choose it wisely for uh, uh, finding the homologous sequence. The best option is BLAST, you know, which is a local alignment search tool. Another example is in this picture, you can see global versus local. So as you can see, the global alignment is alignment on the whole length of the genome that is you're going to compare. So usually the global alignment is used only for the genomes. So while the local alignment is for high similarity regions inside the whole genome, as you can see that only those regions are most of us are interested only in genes, right? To work with functional genes. So those things we have to take out you know, pruned from the genome and then we will have to construct the alignment of the high similarity regions alone in the local alignment. So two algorithms are the old algorithm in 1970 is called Needleman and Wunsch is used for optimal global pairwise alignment. It's still being used, you know. Now for the local alignment, the algorithm which is commonly used is Smith and Waterman's method that is in 1981. These are quite intuitive. If you are interested, please search it out, especially this Needleman and Wunsch method as well as uh, Smith and Waterman. Both methods are really intuitive how it works and all. I'm not going to technicalities, but these algorithms are commonly used for global as well as local alignment. So BLAST has three steps. The first step is constructing the dictionary of all the query words linearly. So query indexed by all words of the size k, k tuple value or k value means how much is the word length or the size of the words, right? So it can be anything, it, it's up to you. So if you are performing a BLAST search, you can actually fine tune the BLAST search to get this k value. I will briefly tell you uh, why the k value needs to be high or low, right? What is the importance of it? So basically, if this is your query, it's usually the blast is with your gene, right? It's not that's very simple one or two words like in Google search, but here it is a huge uh, gene that you're searching in the blast to see the significant match in the database. Uh, for example, you want to identify a plant species which you really have no clue, then you extract the gene, sequence it, and now you have a sequence and you blast it with the database. So now you have got a gene sequence that is your query. So step one is to construct the query words, a dictionary of the query words. As you can see in this image, the first letter is A, A, C, G. So that has come into the dictionary of the query word. The next word is that, see, one frame shifted to the right. 
A C G T is the second of our query word. Then comes C G T T is our third query. So likewise, you have to construct the query words of the entire query, entire sequence, right? That is the first step. Next is to generate all relatives of the word and add into the query index. Do you remember I told you that Google search, sometimes you make spelling mistake and still Google can spot it. Probably, uh, you know, the Google's algorithm is really intelligent in one sense that it can predict, right? So uh, predict the kind of common mistakes that people, we people do. So likewise, in the blast, it actually generate the relatives of the word, right? And add into the query index. So relative means that very similar uh, to that uh, the search that we make it for example ATGC the the score is 50 I'm not going to how the scoring happens but you know this is basically 50 is a score of this ATGC now coming to the relative words of this ATGC these are the relative ACGC here you can see that if you compare ACGC with ATGC the only difference is the C T changed into C now the score is 60 now ATGT is another relative. Why it is the difference is only the final T instead of C it is T. Now ATGG is another one G instead of C. So the score matters with a steric similarity. The you know or, or the stereotypic similarity how the structural similarity of this basis with the query base. So if it is really similar then the scores are quite identical. If the structure is very different, for example, uh, cytosine and adenine, is if it's very different, then uh, it will be the score will be different. So that is the fund of it. So that kind of search with the relative words is something called fuzzy logic. You know, so related fuzzy. So that is a kind of a AI term that is what is being implemented inside the BLAST algorithm. So finding the relative is the step number two. Now, once you find this, the relative, then you will have to update the index, the query index, you see, with the all the uh, related words as well. So this ATGC not only includes just ATGC, but also ACGC, you know, this is the first one or ATGT as well as ATGG, all these are related terms. So you will have to update that, uh, the index as well. Step three is nothing but searching directly searching in the database so initiate the alignment with all the in occurrences of that word in the query so uh, that is how it happens so the database with the query we will have to search linearly so wherever there is an alignment forms then uh, you know it will actually uh, go with that uh, with the significant match for example atcg as well as atcg these two are matching so whenever it match, it forms an alignment and then extend the alignment in both the directions. So that is the step four. It's basically a four step, not just three step, but it's a four step process. So the fourth step is alignment extension. So once we find an alignment, extend to the left and right with no gaps until the alignment score falls below a th certain threshold. So this is how it works. As you can see, this is your query and this is your align, uh, you know, the, the uh, database entry. So if you find one alignment, the database entry and the query matches, then it extends to the both the direction to, to find the complete alignment. So alignment is a kind of a dot plot. You might remember this is nothing but a dot plot. So wherever things are matching, you put a dot. So finally, you're going to get a kind of a line. So linear dot plot or dot matrix approach is what is being used in BLAST as well. So now comes the K or K tuple value. So the long words, if you use K value as 15, of course you can adjust it. You know, if you do a BLAST search, uh, the, the, finute, the minute controls of the BLAST, you can actually specify what K value you have to use. If you use long K value, like K value as 15, and then the, pro the problem is with sensitivity, but good, Thing is that it is very fast at the same time if you use short words like k7 it's really sensitive but speed is now problem so what you want sensitivity or speed give and take so you need to find an optimal solution for your problem so that is why if you are really looking for the uh, the whole genome for example then it takes like you know hours and hours so instead of going with the short words we will go with the long words right but if you're looking at the high scoring uh, regions inside an epitope for example COVID-19 
you know the novel coronavirus epitopes if you're looking only at the high scoring regions that is nothing but epitopes then you can go with uh, short words rather than the long words you know so the long words are good to increase the speed while short words are good to increase the sensitivity so that is how to choose it so the, if you choose the longer word the alignment is going to be very less but uh, it's much more faster and low chance of a match so that is what the problem is you know that the chance of match is very low but it's much faster and if you choose the short words the alignments are going to be more and but there is a very high chance of a match but it's pretty slow so that is what the speed versus sensitivity trade-off so the k tup value or the word size or k tuple value stands for the length of the word used to search the uh, for the identity for proteins a k tuple value of 3 would give a hash table of 20 to the power 3 elements or 8000 entries hash table is nothing but a database you know in algorithm uh, the hash table is synonymous to the algorithm so an algorithm will have 80000 entries if you use just the 3 uh, you know the k tuple value so that is why it is really really slow so higher k tuple value less likely you will get a match unless it is identical you know so but that is not exactly one you don't really want to find the identical uh, sequence you really want to see that which is the closest it could be 98 percent identical or 95 percent so sensitivity also important so the lower the k tuple value the more background you are going to have you know so that is again that's going to be a problem lots of noise is going to happen and you will have to choose the signal from the noise if you are choosing a very low k tup value now higher the k tup value the faster the analysis and fewer the diagonals so let us do blast search by ourselves go to the google search for blast so we are now in the blast page as you can see in this page there are several variants of the blast so the standard blast or n blast is nucleotide blast where a dna sequence is uh, searched against the DNA database or the gen bank, you know, the nucleotide sequence database. Now, there is yet another blast, is known as protein blast, where protein sequence is blasted against the protein database. So, protein to protein uh, search is called the protein protein blast or uh, the protein blast. Now, if you have the GNS, DNA sequence or the gene sequence that you would like to uh, search with the protein blast. Uh, protein sequence database you know for example you have a functional gene and which you would like to search for the uh, uh, structural moieties in protein sequence database then you would need something called blast x so blast x as this image says it's a translated nucleotide to the protein search so this uh, the query that is nothing but the gene will be translated first so translation it's an in silico translation you see so to the amino acid sequence and this sequence will be searched inside the protein blast so it will be the query will be your input dna sequence that will be translated first to the proteins and this will be uh, you know the search with the protein blast the opposite so from the protein if you have protein sequence that you would like to search with the dna uh, homologs gene homologs then you would need to translate this into the proteins right so protein this needs to be translated back into the the nucleotide so this nucleotide the dna will be now searched with the D nucleotide blast so this is the main uh, for variants of the blast but of course there are specialized blast as well for example uh, if you want to do the primer you know if you want to do uh, design the primer with the species specific specificities and then you can do the primer blast that we have already covered in one of our previous videos and you can also do smart blast to find the highly similar sequences to your query something like mega blast then ig blast is for the immunoglobulin and t cell receptor sequences so if you are working with those then you would need uh, be interested to do this ig blast or more blast if you are working with environmental sequences for for example metagenomics you know or uh, metagenetics so uncultured uh, bacteria for example then you would be interested to to work with this uh, more blast yet another type of blast is the multiple alignment here you are aligning the sequence using the domain and protein constraint we have just seen that right so how the domain and protein constraints can help us to refine the 
uh, alignment like tree coffee algorithm can be used so you can do that inside the blast itself uh, provided by the NCBI it's really handy now coming to how to, to perform the blast so you just have to click the first one that is nucleotide blast so this is how the blast page looks like so you have to copy and paste your DNA sequence in this window or you can also paste your GenBank identifier you know the accession number if you are blasting one accession with the whole database so paste it and then you can also refine your search based upon all these things so this one is very important which database so usually we all search in the nucleotide collection but if you're working with some specific like rough seq uh, database of the human genome for example or uh, you know you can you can search with the mouse genome database or rna 16s or 18s or 28s uh, or ITS from fungi if you are working with only with the fungi or EST for the express sequence tags or EST for the express sequence tags or rough seq genome database or whole genome shotgun context you know there is WGS database or right now most people are working with the coronavirus right so you can also have this coronavirus beta database that is beta coronavirus database it all depends upon what kind of sequence that you use so otherwise you can just uh, stick with the uh, the default option just accept it that is nucleotide collection or nrrt uh, just accept the default delimiter that is nucleotide collection that is nr or nt database and then you can just look at this parameter this is very important parameter the first option is highly similar sequence or mega blast where the k tuple value tend to be larger or longer now comes more similar sequences that is discontinuous mega blast where the you know the sequences are the k tuple values are lesser around 11 8 to 11 now coming to the similar sequences of blast n it is really slow but it is highly specific where the k tuple values are around four to six so it is this is what i recommend to my students if you're working with uh, uh, phylogenetics so blast 10 is the most appropriate right so while mega blast is good if you're working with the whole genome data right for for or for as an approximation for the uh, phylogenetic study so otherwise just stick with blast n that is somewhat similar sequences that has got uh, k tuple value optimized for you know the highly sensitive search though it is little bit uh, slower but uh, it's immaterial then simply click here on the blast so if you really want to uh, con control your k table value you know so it just work absolutely fine in my experience but if you are really interested to control it then you can click on this algorithm parameters uh, for fine tuning the blast algorithm then just click it and then see it the blast result and uh, you know so you can actually assess it by e value uh, for the significance of the search results so how do you evaluate the blast results you after searching the blast you're going to get lots of result so you will have to pick up the which is the best one so a blast search can produce dozens or even hundreds of candidate alignments out of these alignments which are really specific or significant so there are many scores so raw score bit score and e values are used as statistics inside the blast so of which e value is by far the most useful right e value is nothing but expect values and it provides information about the likelihood that a given sequence alignment is significant you know the statistical significant same concept smaller the e value less likely the alignment was by chance so it is equivalent to the p value in the statistical hypothesis testing so if the p value is very low then you know probability is high that null hypothesis is might not be valid so alternative hypothesis is right right so people are all interested to get the lowest p value as possible to reject the null hypothesis same way e value the lower is better rather than higher right so if you look at the statistics as i told you e value is nothing but equivalent to the p value it's not exactly the same but it's comparable right smaller numbers are more significant for example 1 e minus 4 that is how you can see that right even the exponent is missing just say 1 e minus 1 or 5 e minus 50 which is lower of course this is lower minus 50 right so it is exponent minus 50 means 0 0.50 times 0 then 5 right this is a lot more uh, smaller than this number 
So E value is calculated from the alignment score. So again, I'm not going to the technicalities, but there is actually a relationship between alignment score and the E value. So how many alignments of that score would likely occur by chance if you query the alignment, the database of that size? So it's all about the chance. So how many alignment you're going to get out, you know, because of the chance alone. If the number is very low, it's going to be very low chance, right? So it is the match is significant. That is how to interpret it. So one example is that if GenBank contains 10 million sequences, there is a very good probability that the sequence cat tag that is c-a-t-t-a-g will occur multiple times in sequences that are not evolutionarily related so it's not getting multiple sequence as our result my the the main point the funda of the the blast is that uh, to find out the homologous sequences right so if it is just by random chance you you're getting two sequences are identical so that makes no sense to our inferences so it is very important to see that evolutionarily uh, the homology in the sequences so e value represents the likelihood that the observed alignment is due to chance alone so usually after the blast search you will be getting this kind of graphical representation or the color coded result so usually this color code as you can see the the legend on the top it says the uh, alignment scores of the color key so if the key is very high like red the score is very high that means that e value is very low then comes this so if it is in the bottom most uh, the black labeled alignments E value is pretty high so that means that it's maybe because of the chance so uh, just go with the top uh, you know the result of the blast values so in many of the softwares sequences can directly be blasted you know the word blasted within the software like genius the software I recommend uh, is if you are using a Windows based system uh, genius is really good or pop is also a very uh, good one but pop is only for the phylogenetic works right uh, parsimony based especially uh, genius is a very good software if you're using Windows and if you just want to get your sequences analyzed much more faster so it's pretty convenient though it is not uh, freeware you have to pay uh, to get the license key for the genius but it's really intuitive and it's, it, it really saves a lot of time or you can go for a freeware called mega so mega also have got a browser inside built inside the mega software you know so you can do the blast search inside the this software directly you really don't have to go to a browser to do this search you know in the browser window and then uh, export the sequence as fast and import again inside this software that is a, a lot of uh, you know that, that's not optimal solution to your problem so in summary a simple heuristics for the base call auditing is by looking for unique polymorphisms in multiple sequence alignment with the top blast hit so first you perform a blast search align it and look for uh, unique polymorphisms and these polymorphisms you will have to carefully manually audit uh, you know for base call auditing so it really saves a ton of your time